David Vizard here, and you guys are watching Powertech 10. Before we get going here, I'd like to ask you if you remember the intro to the last cam video we did. Here it is again. I want you to see the truth of the matter here. No, don't worry. It'll all show up on the dyno. We'll know which way to go. Right, but hush for now. Here you will see how the dyno and some deep thinking paid off big dividends. In this edition, that would be 162, we're going to take stock of Eric Weingartner's cam test. First, big kudos to Eric and his crew. To get through that many cam tests in that short a time on an engine which appears to be otherwise stock, i.e. no added aids to speed up cam changes, the rate at which they were doing cams, which was about five a day, was excellent. Even with a built-up engine that was designed right from the start to make cam changes fast, uh, when, when I was doing my cam stuff with my crew, the fastest we could change a cam from shut down to start up uh, in a small block Chevy was 28 minutes. I never managed it. It was a two-man job. I never managed it uh, much more than about 29 and that was with with Dave Mountain as my uh, helper there or rather I helped him. So anyway big kudos for that. Now that does raise a point. I've had so many people say you can't test that many cams in a day. Eric You've just proved you can, right? So there's a bunch of guys out there need to, to start thinking about how can I apologize to DV? Oh, they won't, but that's neither here nor there. But now, now let's move on. <clears throat> um, how did I finish in this? Well, of course, I was in this competition for two reasons. Uh, the, mo the primary one was to get data so I could finish off my... Uh, LS CAM program. The secondary one was to see how well I could do. Now, in specking out my CAM, I did make allowance for the fact that I didn't want it to make the number one figures because I needed data above where I was. So I did spec it out with the thought of being about eighth on there. And uh, overall, I think I was 20th. Um, so, did I achieve my primary goal? Absolutely. Not as well as I'd wanted to because the, some of the data beneath my finishing point, or, well most of it, was a little bit ragged and uh, there was things going on there that I couldn't figure out what they might be. So, as we speak here, I've got three uh, charts drawn out with um, the uh, the way things go when you change a certain element right we've had to fix compression ratio because that's fixed and and also uh, the um, amount of duration is doesn't change very much for the biggest to the smallest but one thing is very clear the optimum load center line angle for that engine on that compression appears to be somewhere between 108 and 109. I suspect 109 is just about as close as it can get. Here's the chart from the uh, previous uh, video I did on the uh, shootout. Now, if you remember rightly, I predicted that we would have our winning lobe centerline angle in the group just circled, with the winner located at the red dot arrowed. Just for reference, my cam choice, along with four others, was in the group shown here. So as far as uh, my cam spec was concerned, it appears I say appears because nothing's set in concrete yet, that 108 to 109 was it for the lobe centerline angle 
at this compression ratio with this displacement with this valve size. Now let's move on to another section here. The duration of the cam. I suspected it needed a little more cam than I actually called for here. But remember, I did need data above and below. So I tended to err slightly on the short side rather than the long side. If you look at the torque of all the engines at 4200 RPM, mine was amongst the top ones there. So my power curve was actually downshifted. Um, would have made a nice street cam. Probably had good vacuum as well, but that wasn't in the competition. However, my guesswork wasn't right up to par there. And I can see that for some reason, which you know, I've discussed this with Stan, that we haven't quite put our finger on yet. The LS engine likes duration a little bit better than the small block Chevy. Why is not clear? Because the LS engine we're checking on had a big intake valve, flowed very well, and so did the exhaust. This is, would have been an indicator that for the displacement we had, it would turn some good RPM. Well, well it did, but not as much as expected. So, we know that the program right now needs to very likely predict or call for more duration. How much more? Well, I'm stabbing a guess here, underlying guess. Probably four to five degrees at 50 thousandths. Last on our list is the uh, difference between the intake duration and exhaust duration. Now, I did say earlier on that I talked to um, uh, Brian Salter about this because he has a lot of... Um, uh, experience with altering the split slightly for uh, circle track engines that are hauling a lot of RPM towards the end of the straight. And <clears throat> Brian did put in mind something, and I think I discussed this, that the test engine with its smaller exhaust than required might have been part of the, uh, how shall I say, effect that we're seeing here so just for this next time round I'm going to come up with a new subroutine that will expand the exhaust duration on the cam selection for an LS engine and I'll have to do that subroutine based on not as many data points as I'd like but I've got some from earlier tests limited earlier tests at that on smaller engines so that will give me a guide there and that's about where we're at at the moment so in closing here what i'd like to say is again thanks for all those guys who entered great job done by eric and his compadre on the dyno and i really can relate to that having gone through that myself I think that was an outstanding job. If anybody picks up these uh, tests as part of a bigger scheme for uh, one of the big channels and Eric benefits from it, good. I knew I had a reason for saying Eric is one of the good guys. That's why I had all that trouble with him telling me that I wasn't telling the truth. No. But I stuck with it. Eric's a good guy. And I'll stick with that. Now, last thing on here is all those guys who put in time and effort and freely discussed their results. I want to thank you guys because you have jointly saved me a lot of work. And I appreciate that. And one last request from you guys. I would love to have you watch the videos on this that I've done because I would like a peer review from you guys in particular. Brian Tooley, that includes you as well, right? We've got some sorting out to do with the cams that you put in coming up with results which were quite unexpected from my point of view, but 
they are conveying information so thank you Brian very much well that's it for now thank you for watching do not forget to subscribe do not forget to like do not forget to be notified share and we wouldn't say no to one of those super thanks with a few bucks on it to help support our somewhat expensive test uh, sessions here. Thank you for watching.